Uh, I want to talk to you for about 15 or 20 minutes before we get into our worship set about an amazing discovery. I shared the last time that I was with you a quote by Helen Calder. Here it is. Our hunger for God is the Holy Spirit's landing strip. Our hunger for God is the Holy Spirit's landing strip. As our hunger for a close relationship with God increases, so does the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. And sometime in the future, we will talk about the difference in the omnipresent Holy Spirit and the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. I found four very unlikely individuals in the Old Testament whose hunger caused and an emergency landing of heaven's Lockheed Martin C-5 Super Galaxy cargo plane. Thank you, Jesus, for Google. In 1970, when the C-5 first rolled off the assembly line, it was the world's largest military aircraft. That's not the case now. It had 28 tires, and it has 28 tires on its landing gear. This is a big old plane, my friend. It is massive. So, these four guys, on this day, God landed heaven's Airbus in the backyard of some hungry lepers. When the hatch opened, the angels unloaded an abundance of overflowing supplies and more than enough provisions for an entire hungry town. Now, I got some good news for you. If you're here and you're hungry, God is more than able to fill you up and overflow. So here's the backstory behind the leper's most amazing discovery. The cruel and the brutal Assyrian's army under the command of Benadad had besieged the city of Samaria. All supplies were cut off from the uh, going into the town. As a result of the lengthy besiegement, there was a great famine. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove dung sold for five pieces of silver. And just as the donkey head is no choice cuisine in our day, neither was it a desired delicacy in that day. Donkey's head being eaten and the fact that it was so high reveal the vast scarcity of food. That was the price, and that is price gouging at its worst. The demand was so great and the supply was so sparse, it drove the prices beyond reason. In fact, the starvation was so bad, the living conditions in the city had deteriorated so severely that people had resulted in cannibalism. Yet... In these deplorable conditions, the prophet Elisha brought a message of unbelievable hope in the middle of a most serious crisis. Boy, I am so thankful in the midst of deplorable conditions in America that there is some men and women that is still declaring an unbelievable hope in Jesus Christ. Here's what was said. This is what the Lord says, Elisha says. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver. And 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. Think about it. In other words, within 24 hours, you'll be able to buy the best choice foods for pennies. And sure enough, the next day there was more than enough food. 
more provision, more supplies than the townspeople could consume and use. And remember, just 24 hours earlier, they were resulting to cannibalism. They were starving to death. Keep in mind, this is what I want you to keep in mind. This whole thing was put in motion by four lepers. Nobodies. People that had been quarantined from the town had to hang out because of their disease by themselves. Four lepers put this in motion. We will be amazed at God's glorious riches that we'll discover simply because of our hunger for him. As you turn in your Old Testament to 2 Kings chapter 7 and find verse 3, just let me remind you, as a result of us following and being in, uh, uh, going to Asbury and following what we've been able to follow on social media, uh, it, has, it has created within people, myself included, a vast hunger for the manifest presence of God. And listen, listen up. I want you to see today, in the next few minutes, what this hunger in your soul can bring to your family, to your friends, to this church, to your community, to your home, to your neighborhood, what your hunger can bring to so many others. Watch it. It's amazing. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gate. Why should we sit here waiting to die? They ask each other, we will starve if we stay here, but with the famine in the city, we will starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Assyrian army. If they let us live, we're so much better. But if they kill us, well, we're going to have died anyway. <laughs> now, do you see what happens when hunger sets the agenda? And some of you that are familiar with this story, you already know. And, and I want you to see what happens when hunger sets the agenda. I keep hearing the Holy Spirit say, let people's hunger set the agenda for church. Come on, amen. Let people's hunger set the agenda. People that are hungry for me, let them set the agenda. Here's a quote by Greg Hallison. I quote, a do-nothing fatalism has to yield to a risk all faith. That's what happens when people get hungry. We have set on our laurels, come on, amen. And we have given lip service to the deplorable conditions of our nation. And it is a, and has resulted basically in a do-nothing fatalism. But when people get hungry for God, all of a sudden, like these four lepers, they have this enormous risk all faith. Let your hunger for a close relationship with God set your agenda. Just let your starvation for the manifest presence of God, not a church association, not a church that you attend, not a, not a label that you have, not a, not a Christian name that you call yourself, uh, uh, but a hunger for the presence of Almighty God. Oh, when you get hungry, now listen, when you and I get hungry, you say, why can't we get people to move? They're not hungry. Do you see what happens? When we have this do-nothing fatalism, and that's why we sit. But when we get starving for God, there's a risk all faith that puts feet to our passion. There was a reckless pioneer spirit among these lepers which, I, which refused to die amid Samaria's oppression. Like Esther, if I perish, I perish, concluding I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. I believe somewhere in the warring of the 20-something in this country is a cognitive response to the pitiful futility of man's attempt to right the course of our society. They are sick and tired of our futile attempt. This 20-something group are sick and tired of our futile attempt to improve our country and right the course of a broken society. And their hunger, their reckless pioneer spirit is a risk in all as they put their faith in the God of heaven. 
Their hunger, their risk all faith is creating a landing strip for the Holy Spirit. Heaven's cargo plane, the lamb has landed and he has, uh, uh, and has he ever unloaded the wealth of heaven on their campuses, amen. Uh, the windows of heaven are being opened and the revival is happening across the U.S. But just know this, these four lepers' discovery from starvation to satisfaction, from famine to feasting was made with their feet, not just their head. We're going to need to do more than nod our head and softly whisper amen to the truth that calls us to hunger for God's righteousness. Get your feet moving away from where you have been. Listen up. If you have not been satisfied, if you have not been filled, if your hunger still remains from where you have been, I promise you if you stay where you are, you will be hungry this time next year. Or if Jesus doesn't come back, you'll be be hungry if you live long enough in the next decade. If where you are has not satisfied and fed your soul with the manifest presence of God in the past, it won't in the future unless you get your feet moving. Now, you may feel like these lepers, I'm not much. To others, you may look like that you're not much. You lack the lepers because of what you had or because of what you have become may have emotionally quarantined you from others. You may have written, not just, uh, yes, it's concerning that other people has written you off, but it is more concerning that you have wrote yourself off. And I want you to know, it was four lepers that got this thing going. Ah, amen. You want to have a Holy Spirit party, I'm just saying, you're going to have to hang out with some hungry people. There's some people that are hungry for Jesus, hungry for a close relationship with God. Notice this. You stand outside the gate. No one considers you as bringing significant solution uh, to com the complexity of civilization. In fact, they see you as a part of problem. But little did they know your immense hunger for God would give the Holy Spirit a landing strip to unload heaven on your community. Amen and amen. Little did they know that your hunger would give the Holy Spirit a landing strip to unload heaven at your house in your home, and wherever you go. Your habits, your lifestyle choices, your consistent downturns, your sin, your bad outcomes may have buried you beneath anyone believing that you can contribute anything worthwhile. And as well, it may have caused you to believe that you cannot contribute anything worthwhile. If that's you, I want you to say to your neighbor, my hunger for God is going to land heaven's Airbus on the front lawn of the Bell Fountain community. That's too much to say. So just turn to your neighbor and say, I say what he said and here's what I said my hunger for God is going to land heaven's Airbus on the front lawn of heaven of Bell Fountain community the thing about this discovery is nothing tangible is needed to find everything you need I want to say it again. Nothing tangible is needed to find everything you need. In fact, now watch this. The less you have, the easier it is to find in Christ all you could ever want or need. It's the meek. Watch this. It's the meek. It's those that hunger and thirst. It's the poor in spirit that witness the Holy Spirit landing heaven's C5 super galaxy on the front lawn of living. Oh, my, my, my. I'm telling you, if you're hungry, that's all you need. Come on, amen. If you're hungry, that's all you need for the Holy Spirit to make uh, you a, your life and your hunger uh, make you a landing strip for him. Listen up, listen up. 
You're about to make an amazing discovery of a Savior, a God who will satisfy you that you will never thirst again. You will never hunger again. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Did you hear me? Come on, amen. Did you hear me? The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That's what, that's what he does when he feeds us. And that's what happens when we drink from the water of life. Are you going to take the good news of what Jesus has done for you and tell it to your family, friends, to your neighbors, to your acquaintances? And they will not thirst again, nor will they hunger again. He supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory. Your outcome, your outcome must be as the lepers was. So let's read it. When the men with leprosy arrived at the edge of the camp, they went into the tent after, uh, went into one tent after another. Eating and drinking wine, they carried off silver and gold and clothing and hid it. They were like kids at Christmas, opening one box and then on to another, plundering one bag and then the next, ramsacking one tent and then another stuffing their starving stomachs with the much-needed nutrition, holding the treasures tightly to their chests. And finally, one of them said, This is not right. This is a day of good news, and we aren't sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some calamity will certainly fall upon us. Come on, let's go back and tell the people at the palace. Let's go back and tell the folk in Samaria. So they went back to the city and they told the gatekeeper what had happened. And we, uh, we went out to the Assyrian camp and no one was there. The horses and the donkeys were hitched up and the tents were all in order, but there wasn't a single person around. Then the gatekeeper shouted the news to the people in the palace. And guess what? They had a church dinner on the ground. Your hunger this morning will bring you some amazing discovery of the Lord's profuse power and his prolific provisions. May I remind you, our rich discoveries in Christ is not for selfish pleasure or our personal spiritual prominence. Bring your hunger for God uh, to, and be filled to overflowing as the Holy Spirit leads, uh, lands the Airbus of abundance on the front lawn of your living. But don't settle in a holy hubble, huddle. Don't call your bless me buddies and congregate among you four and no more. No, 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 no. Beloved, if you have been filled with Almighty God, if you have feasted from the table, if you have been a participant of his manna and it has filled you up and it will, it will fill you up. And what you do with that filling is not set and get fat and sassy, but what you do with that filling is you go feed somebody that is starving to death in Bell Fountain right now. As they come, we must not loot God's blessing for me and me alone. Like the lepers, we are uh, nobody's heading to town telling everybody about a Savior that can make anybody a somebody. Amen. As someone said, we are, and I quote, satisfied beggars telling other hungry beggars where to find bread. Allow your hunger to inspire your faith to seek him right here, right now, this morning. You're hungry? Allow your hungry to uh, allow your hunger to raise up within you a risk all faith. Come on, amen. Our do nothing fatalism has got us exactly that. Nothing. Allow your hunger to draw you to a God who gives life and gives it more abundantly. Allow your hunger to bring you to this place to seek him. Please listen up. Allow your hunger to inspire your faith to seek him. And may your fullness incite your witness to share him. Come for a feeling. and go sharing. They're gonna lead us in worship. 
I want you to let your hunger, I want you to let your hunger determine the posture of your worship from here. If you want to worship him and stand, you do that. If you want to worship him and fall on your face, you do that. I want you to allow your hunger to set the agenda of what happens in your life for the next 30, 45 minutes. Allow your hunger to set your agenda. Because I'm telling you, that's what provides the Holy Spirit a landing strip with his manifest presence. We are desperate for heaven to land in the Bell Fountain community. We're desperate for the Airbus to land down. huh? We're, we're desperate for the Airbus to drop its 28 tires in its landing gear. And, and, and the nose of this bad boy opens and the, and, the, and, the, and the tail of this bad boy opens. And just watch God unload. Watch the windows of heaven. Oh, we are so hungry in this community. We are so hungry in our churches. Come on. We're starving for the manifest presence of God. Allow your hunger to set your agenda. How do you want to respond as they lead us in our worship? How do you want to respond?